Oh, you know what time it is, don't you? Yeah, that's right. It's time to play a shitty game for the 66th fucking time. Well, it's like a needle. It sucks ass, but you know what? You might as well just get it over with. So, what should I play? So many choices. So much shitty games. I'm just surrounded by this mound of filth. Huh. You know, I just realized that this month marks the 50 year anniversary of the first ever appearance of Spider-Man in comic books. Now Spider-Man happens to be my favorite superhero of all time. But you remember what happened the last time we played Spider-Man, right? That's right, it was Spider-Man and the Sinister Six for the NES. What a pile of shit that was, right? So this time, let's kick it up a notch. Let's kick it up a notch to the 16-bit Sega Genesis. Let's check out Spider-Man the Animated Series. Hmm. That's strange. On the box, it just says Spider-Man, but the text in the game says Spider-Man Animated Series. It's cool that they put the theme music from the 90s animated series in the game, even if it doesn't sound that great. The plot is that Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Smythe have escaped from Ravencroft, a maximum security prison. You have to stop them before they wreak total havoc on New York City. What the hell? Another contradiction? The title screen of the box just says Spider-Man, yet the credits say it's the Spider-Man animated series. Fuck, I'm confused. Now, even though this game can't decide what it's gonna call itself, I'm just gonna call it Spider-Man the Animated Series. However, I must warn you, this could give the impression that this game kicks as much ass as the 90s animated series did. Well, does it? You just start off in some dark building. Is this supposed to be Ravencroft? Who knows. You have the option to turn on the lights, but I'm gonna go for a stealthy approach. Don't want to alert enemies that I'm here. Now, the very first thing I wanted to do was see if Spider-Man had his powers. You know, the ability to crawl on walls and web swing. Remember when we played Spider-Man and the Sinister Six? In that piece of fuck, you couldn't crawl on walls. Well, luckily in this game, you can. Only problem, it doesn't work all the time and it's awkward trying to transition from crawling on the wall to running on the floor. It's really useful when you want to avoid the enemies, which look like, uh, I don't know, Shredder from Teenage Meet the Ninja Turtles without a shirt on some fucking spider legs? Who came up with this shit? Next is figuring out how to web swing. I was jumping around like a fucking asshole trying to get it to work, but he just spun the web and he never swung. After fucking him around for a little bit, I found out that okay, this is how it works. You have to be holding the web button and then and only then do you swing. And what an epic web swing that is. If you don't hold the button, you'll just shoot it out and waste your webbing. Yeah, you see that number over there with the web next to it? Well, that represents how much webbing you have left. If you fuck up the swing, you waste four of them. What a total fucking joke. Even when you do successfully web swing, you still use up four. This game is seriously anal. You can find webbing in the level and it restores ten, but you know what? I have a better solution. How about not having to worry about your fucking webbing? I know that in the comics and the TV show, Spider-Man uses web cartridges and all that shit, but in the game, especially with the controls as fucked as they are, I'd rather not have to worry about using up all my webbing just to get around this bullshit fuck of a level. So, I die. Fuck the stealthy approach. I'd rather be able to see what the goddamn hell I'm doing. Unfortunately though, even when the lights are on, it's still difficult. It's one of those what the fuck do I do kind of games. I went all over the place trying to find out where to go or what to do, and every single fucking time I just wound up in the same fucking place I was before. I actually ended up getting stuck in a doorway. I'm not kidding. I jumped up to a dodge enemy and look, just fucking look. I'm playing a Spider-Man game and I get stuck in a fucking doorway. How the hell does that even happen? I try jumping out of it, but that doesn't work. I just end up crawling on the walls and ceiling. I try anything I can think of and nothing works. I can't believe I'm actually stuck in a doorway. 
No matter what I do, nothing works. I'm just hoping that if I mash buttons, something will get me out, but no, of course not. Fuck this fucking piece of donkey dick. Wow. After two minutes of fucking about, I actually managed to get out. And then I die. What the hell with this sack of fuck? How am I supposed to play this without the slightest idea of what the hell I'm supposed to do? Well, that's one Spider-Man game down. But there are others. So you know what? Let's go back. Let's go way back. I mean, way back. This is one of the first video games I ever reviewed. It's just not on this site, that's all. Spider-Man vs. the Kingpin For starters, instead of a traditional menu, you've got Spider-Man crawling to different options. I don't know, kind of pointless addition if you ask me. It only makes choosing different options take longer than necessary. As for the plot, the Kingpin... <laughs> that's kind of funny. He says, my name is of no importance. I don't know why, but I find that funny. Anyway, the Kingpin says that Spider-Man has hidden a bomb which will explode in 24 hours. He's offering a $10,000 reward for his apprehension. Who's that, Aunt May? Look at the way the cop walks. That's hysterical. So you punch out the cop, you punch out the bad guy, and then it's a dead end. Not even 10 goddamn seconds in and it's a dead end. That's a good sign, right? I went left and right, exhausting my already severely limited possibilities until I discovered that you can get onto the buildings. I crawl up this building and it happens to be the Daily Bugle. There's people who reach out the window and clap for you. I fucked about on top of the buildings until I realized that one of the windows is open on the Daily Bugle. Oh my god, C couldn't they just have an arrow pointing to the window instead of making me jump around like an asshole? So once you're inside, Spider-Man basically tells you what's up. Kingpin's making you look like a bad guy. He's hurt Doc Ock's hiding in a waterfront warehouse. Where did he hear that? Who, who cares? So the plan is to clear your name and defuse the bomb Kingpin planted and to take your camera and get some shots to prove what's really going on. What? This is the Daily Bugle? No, 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 no. This can't be the Bugle. Did the makers of this game ever read the comics or watch the TV shows? Nah, there's no way. This must be the warehouse Spider-Man was just talking about. But then why the hell would it show this after you went to the Daily Bugle? Instead of having Spider-Man pace back and forth in the previous screen, why not show a slideshow of him getting his camera in the bugle or looking up information before heading out and finding this warehouse and then showing this? It would certainly prevent a lot of confusion, not to mention it would have pissed me off as much. Wall crawling in this game is still a pain in the ass, because you have to hold the jump button to stick to the wall. If you let go of the button, you fall off the wall. You fucking piece of goddamn fuck. It's like a spoiled brat. You have to do things his way or else. It reminds me of when I was a kid and my brothers and I would pretend the ground was lava and we'd jump on tables and chairs to avoid it and if you accidentally touched the floor, it was game over. That's what this miserable game is being like. It's being a fucking asshole! I understand having to maybe hold the jump button to stick to the wall, but once you're on the wall, I don't think holding the button should be required anymore. Getting through this warehouse is just a pain in the ass. I mean, the controls aren't the worst, but it's just difficult to navigate because everything looks the same. There's enemies everywhere with the typical assholes that shoot at you, and then there's these fucking dogs. They just run back and forth. It's annoying as shit. And guess what else? They're unaffected by your webbing. You fucking dog! This game is also one of those what the fuck do I do kind of games. You can just tell by looking at his walking that Spider-Man's pissed. It's been 15 minutes and I still can't figure out what to do or where to go. So you see that opening? I'm gonna try to get out. As you can see though, that's no easy task. Get up there! You spider fuck? Get the fuck up there! Oh my Christing fuck, just get up there! I eventually find this mouse. Killing these fuckers is probably the most fun I've had playing this game. You know, Jesus Christ! I'm sorry, but that music was just pissing me off. 
Man, two shitty Spider-Man games. Well, there's got to be at least one good one, right? Ugh. Next on our list is Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge. The game's got rock and music to welcome you. The game has no menu, it's just a title screen, you press start and then it's off to the game. Spider-Man notices the Cyclops, Storm, Wolverine, and Gambit of the X-Men have been abducted. He recognizes the truck is belonging to Arcade and he goes off to save the X-Men. Sounds simple enough. You start the game and one of the first things you'll notice is that you have unlimited webbing now. Finally! In the first game, it was severely limited. In the Kingpin, you had more but it was still limited, but in this game, you get unlimited. It took a little while, but they finally got it right. Anyway, what are we doing again? Saving the X-Men? Alright, let's do it. First thing I wondered was what the goddamn hell these blue things are. I tried picking it up, but that didn't work. I tried shooting it with my webbing, but that didn't work. I walked away from it, and then my spider sense goes off along with an arrow. Guess I need to head in that direction. See that arrow, how it's pointing up? And you see that blue piece of shit above me and how it's blinking? Well, watch this. And there you go. See how I just got that? Well now, all I gotta do is do that a hundred more fucking times and then I've beaten the level. What a wonderful idea. The first level of the game is just jumping around like a jackass collecting these blue blinking things. Who the hell came up with this? And how is this helping out the X-Men? What's even worse is that you discover several of these things scattered all over the place and if they're not blinking, you can't do anything with it yet. You know what that means, right? Yup, you've gotta get these things in a specific order. And to top it all off, you don't get a fucking clue where the next one is until you're within a few feet of it. It's like this. If you're over here, and the next one is over here, it's like tough shit. If you're not a few feet away from it, the game won't tell you which direction to go in to get to it. What a goddamn little son of a bitch bastard. Wouldn't I need more help if I was on the other side of the goddamn level and finding where it is? No. According to this game, when you're within a few feet of it, then and only then do you need guidance. What the hell are these things anyway? Well, upon reading up on this game on the internet, I discovered something that made me laugh. These blue blinking things, they're actually bombs. Yeah, they're bombs that you have to disarm. Why couldn't they make it actually look like you're disarming them? No, you just run into it and then it disappears. In most other games, that means you're picking it up. Even with that bit of knowledge bestowed upon me, it's still a pain in the ass to complete this level. It's like a goddamn rat experiment. You're the rat and you have to navigate your way around this maze of a level and collect all the cheese. It's a goddamn joke. It's also a real pain in the ass when I notice the next bomb to disarm. Look at that. Oh, that means I'm gonna have to go all the way back up and then all the way back down to get to that fucking thing. This game can go fuck its face. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to mention. Check it out. Spider-Man t-shirt. Alright, let's go back to the game. I'll give the game some credit though. At least in this game, Spider-Man is easier to control and it sometimes makes you feel more capable of doing certain tasks. For one, you simply stick to walls when you jump to them. That's right, no more stupid shit like holding down the jump button to be on the wall. If you jump toward a wall, you're going to stick to it, and then you can crawl on into your heart's content. You could even moonwalk on the wall. Nifty. The soundtrack to this game is also pretty good. I don't know exactly what it is, but I like it. It's rocking. But let me tell you, one thing that really pisses me off is the web swinging. It works decently enough, but you can only do it if you're on the ground and standing still. If you're running, you'll automatically stop before he shoots the web out. So yeah, you can't run or jump if you want a web swing. Why the hell not? You can shoot out webs to attack while jumping, why not shoot them out to swing? Why so fucking picky? It's especially annoying here. I'm just trying to get this bomb in that heart. You know, what's a bomb doing in midair anyway? Whatever. I spent over a minute straight trying to get that damn bomb in that damn heart. Can I just jump and get them? Oh my god, I feel like a fucking idiot. It's also kind of annoying that when you pause the game, the music still plays. I mean, it's not a big deal, but when I walk away to do something, and I hear the music playing, it makes me think I didn't pause the game. 
But anyway, I finally got to the last bomb of the level. Took long enough. So you get to where Arcade is holding the X-Man and he talks shit to you. You know, typical bullshit. Now that you've gotten to the X-Men, you can play as each of them. With Spider-Man's level, you're not finding actual bad guys, but with the way the level is designed, it's really difficult to get around. Didn't take me too long to fuck up and die. So now let's check out Wolverine. Okay, so he's fighting toys in a circusy kind of level. Makes a whole lot of sense. You know, there's something missing. I can't pinpoint it exactly, but there's something missing. Oh wait, now I know. Wolverine's claws. Remember when we played Wolverine and you had to press select to get out his claws? Well, yeah. That doesn't work in this game. I tried everything I could think of, but no. Wolverine has no claws in this game. Are you kidding? It would be like if playing Legend of Zelda and all Link could do is beat the shit out of everybody with his bare fucking fists. That's all you can do. Beat the shit out of Jack in the Box people with your bare fists. I don't get it. Wolverine just sucks. That's all there is to it. All you do is jump. Jump and jump and jump over and over again without a single fucking clue as to where to go. You fight random enemies along your way and then just jump around. I went high and I went low and never found a clue as to where to go or what to do. Then I died. There's nothing more to say. Let's move on to Gambit. He's got neat attacks. You can toss his cards and make fireballs come out of him so you can blast your way through all the enemies in your way. What's that meter for though? Is it for the attacks? So you're telling me that once I use up the meter, you're defenseless? Nah, that can't be right. I don't know. What the fuck? Oh, how beautiful. I fell down a hole I could barely see. Genius. Alright, let's check out Cyclops. Alright, well he's got his eye beam. Wait, I don't get it. If Cyclops has his eye beam and Gambit has his cards, why the hell doesn't Wolverine have his claws? Well, Cyclops has an eye beam and a stupid kick. Looks like he's exercising. What is it with this fucking game? That's the second time this has happened. It's like they deliberately put shit that can kill you in the easiest spots to fall into. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah, that's right. That means the schmucks that program this game are being assholes. Real assholes. So I fall to my death. Let's try this shit again. Alright, so I kill this fuckface and... What? There's nowhere I can go. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. I can't reach the platform? So what, is this it? Am I stuck? Do I have to commit suicide? Oh, there's a minecart. Oh look, what's that? Oh, okay, it's hell. Oh, 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 come on! What kind of stupid fucking bullshit is that? I fell right through it! And how funny is it that I've died while jumping for health? And it's game over. You know, if there's one thing I absolutely can't stand, it's when game developers totally fuck up something good. Like Spider-Man. But this is a serious situation. They fucked up Spider-Man not once, not twice, but three times. Three times! Okay, fine. So the last one wasn't as bad as the first two. But you know what? Fuck you. It still counts. This is an absolute outrage. But we're still not done yet. So if you're still here with me, then I applaud you and I thank you. At least now I have someone to share this inexcusable Spider-Man shit fest with. Let's move on. We've made it to the Game Boy Advance. Now please bear with me as the footage came out a bit blurry. It's Spider-Man the Movie, based on the 2002 Sam Raimi film. You've got Mitsu to greet you, but it sounds like ass. Then you get to watch some clips from the movie. Given the fact that this is a Game Boy, the footage looks good. Damn good. Much better than I would expect it to look, given the technical limits at the time. The title screen is a bit of a letdown, though. After seeing the movie footage, it only makes you wonder why there couldn't be a bit more of a visual rather than the blue text we're given. Oh. Well, what the fuck? As for the plot, there really isn't much of a plot, even though it's based off the movie. It's just a bunch of mini-games. The first one involves going through a small part of New York, rescuing hostages. The controls are pretty good. Sometimes it's a bit awkward to go from walk crawling to running on the ground, but it's nothing too bad. 
Web swinging is also fairly easy, it just lacks variety, since there's only one animation he does for every time he web swings, and just the way he looks while doing it looks awkward. The animations in this game are also actually really well done. When you're fighting bad guys, you hear them moan as well as see text coming from them like you would see in a comic. It's a pretty cool touch actually. The animations are just really well done. From the crawling on the wall to the beating the crap out of the bad guys, it's visually appealing. There's also explosives they have that blow up right in your face, and they, as well, look really good. You get a 10 minute time limit to save everyone in the level. Once you finish that, you get a brief cutscene where one of the guys you tied up lets you know that his boss sent him and the other guys to delay you, and then a bomb goes off. Next, you're in a building, and it's collapsing. The objective, of course, is to get out of the building, and you again have 10 minutes to do so. Along the way, you've got these FBI looking guys and an occasional douchebag trying to block your way, but you can just mow past these guys with relative ease. It's not until a few minutes into the level that the obstacles get more challenging to navigate your way through. It's actually a really fun level, it makes you stay on your feet and think on the spot. Look at the chaos around me. The walls above me are collapsing. Gotta move faster. Oh man, that was close. Eventually, I beat the level, and the next thing I know, I'm facing Vulture. I hate this fucking guy. I especially hated him in the 90s TV show when he made Spider-Man old. As a little kid, I was so mad that he got Spider-Man and got so upset when I watched the next episode and Peter Parker was an old man who couldn't do shit to protect the innocent civilians he swore he would protect. But anyway, Vulture was probably one of the easiest bosses in the history of video games. If you just stay on the wall and keep punching, he can't do a damn thing. Every time he goes near you, he gets his ass handed to him before he could even think about doing something. Yeah, take that, Vulture, you son of a motherless fuck! So, I beat him. Next, I'm web swinging in the city in a special bonus stage. I'm not sure what I'm doing, to be honest. Something about dodging the Green Goblin's pumpkins or something. All I know is that it looks cool. It actually kind of reminds me of those moments in the TV show where it would show the computer-generated city for a brief moment. Looked awesome in the show, and it looks good here. Who would have thought that out of three Sega Genesis games and one Game Boy game, that the Game Boy game would be the most fun to play? Wait, I'm getting deja vu here. Who would have thought that out of four Godzilla games, two of them being for the NES and two of them being for the Game Boy, that the fucking Game Boy one would be better? Like, wouldn't you think that the NES one would be better by far? I know I would. Man, the Sega Genesis got its 16-bit ass kicked. Now, of course, there's other Spider-Man games I neglected to mention in this video, such as Maximum Carnage and Separation Anxiety. You know, these were two of my favorite games growing up during my childhood. Maximum Carnage was a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. It allowed the player to control Spider-Man and Venom in button-mashing goodness as you went on a journey to stop the Spider-Man supervillain Carnage from taking over the city. I remember being really disappointed at the fact that it was only one player. After all, not only were Spider-Man and Venom both on the cover, but they were both playable. It only begged the question, why not make it a two-player game? Well, a year later, that problem was solved when Venom and Spider-Man Separation Anxiety was released. But most people, including myself, simply called it Separation Anxiety. This time, two players were able to control Spider-Man and Venom and work together in even more beat-em-up goodness. It was one of the best beat-em-up games available at the time, along with Streets of Rage. There were both pros and cons to playing as either Spider-Man or Venom. Spider-Man was faster than Venom, but required less damage to die, whereas Venom was stronger than Spider-Man, but slower. It was also quite the sight to see arch-rivals Spider-Man and Venom actually teaming up to take down a common enemy. I thought back then, and I still think that the cover is fucking badass. In particular, Venom. Just look at him. You wouldn't want to fuck with that bastard. Will I ever do a proper review of either one of these two games? Only time will tell. But you know what? I'm gonna end this video right here. So thanks for watching, rate, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Nah, there isn't. Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, hope you enjoyed my Spider-Man review, or 
I guess it could be considered a marathon uh, since I reviewed like four or five games. Uh, I, it's funny because uh, when I first started to, to write the script and prepare for the process of making the NC-17 episode, I originally just intended to review the Spider-Man animated series, the first game I, uh, I reviewed, but then uh, I was like, you know what, why not just go all out, you know, since it's been a little while since I made an NC-17 episode. So I figured, you know, why not just include all those other Spider-Man games. So, hope you enjoyed it because it took a long time to make. It took about three days to make, so, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed it. So, anyway, I know this video has been a decently length video, but, um, while we're on the subject, we're on the subject anyway, so I might as well briefly tell you what I think of the animated, uh, animated, the Amazing Spider-Man for the Xbox 360. Um, well, uh, let's, let's give it a go. Alright, so here's what I think of the Spider-Man, uh, these load times are kind of annoying, I'm not gonna lie, and this, this like, Twitter stuff is, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of pointless to me, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so I just beat this game the other day, so it's actually, uh, convenient that I'm doing this video now. Uh, I decided to do, to do n n my time. Uh, I think one of the most, uh, I think, uh, one of the biggest improvements is the, uh, the actual web swinging, because, you know, if you watch, you know, if you watch the TV show, and uh, you watch like, you know, the uh, the movies, uh, then you know, Spider-Man is always acting. You know, he's you know, he's always being acrobatic and stuff like that. And this game, I think, captures it very nicely. Uh, Spider-Man Three came close, but you know, it, it's basically you know, it's basically close, but no cigar. Uh, but, but this game, I believe, really captures Spider-Man, you know? It took a while, but I think there is finally a game that makes you feel as awesome as Spider-Man is. Um, although one thing I really hate is the voice actor for him. I think his name is like Sam Regal or something like that. I can't stand the, the voice actor for Spider-Man. Every single time Spider-Man opened his mouth in this game, I wanted to mute my TV. His voice actor is seriously terrible. Right there, um, this is called web rush mode. You hold the right, the right bumper, and uh, I got an upgrade th that makes it, uh, you know, stay in in, uh, in 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 slow motion for longer. But when when you first play the game, it's for like I think like 10 or 20 seconds or something like that. But basically, you hold the right bumper, and you can look around and you see. Um, and you, 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 collect, you can collect comic book pages, or you see these green silhouettes, I mean green, gold silhouettes, and you let go, and then he'll go to there automatically, and he'll do that by any means necessary, you know? You, you know, like sometimes, like sometimes he'll jump off these, the, uh, sometimes he'll g get on, g get on the side of a building and like run off the building, and you know, and like, like right there, when, when his jump, I didn't do that, he did it himself. And all these acrobatic moves are him or his doing. So I really like the wood, the wet brush mode. It's a really, really cool thing. You know, like basically, like basically, all you gotta do, you know, to to, to, to keep in air, is just keep on pressing the, the the right bumper. I think it's R1 on PS3, and uh, you know, and you you'll be swinging all day long. Um, the game is too short. You know, it, it's 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 too short. Uh, you know, uh, but overall, I really like, really like this game. The, the combat system, it you know, it's not great, but at the same time, I believe it's the best that a Spider-Man game has ever had. So, um, but yeah, I think that The Amazing Spider-Man is miles ahead of any of the Spider-Man uh, uh, games that are that were based on the Sam Raimi films. You know, I mean, they were good. You know, especially Spider-Man Three. That then, you know, that 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 one was the that one was the the, the best, I think. Um, but this one is just it, it's better. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I think I'll stop it here. And um, yeah, any questions about the game you want to uh, you want to know? Feel free to ask me. There's bound to be lots of stuff I forgot. But uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And. Uh, yeah, take care. See ya.